God. We lift up the Ellis family before you this morning, God. As you wrap your loving arms around that family, Lord God. Lord, love them like only you can love them.
you understand that we're going to read the word of God. Today is Palm Sunday. It is the time, it is the Sunday, it is the season that God is prepared to set our salvation in motion. Amen, amen. He's not holding back anymore. He's letting everybody know, listen, the key is the king is not only coming, but the king is here. I dare somebody to shout, the king is here. The king is here. The king is here. The king is here. I need everybody that's able standing on your feet. Give it because the king is here. The king is here. The king is here. The king is here. This is the Sunday that set your salvation in motion. Where Jesus came into Jerusalem. And the people of God laid out palms to receive him. Shouting, Hosanna! Somebody shout, Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna doesn't mean praise the Lord. Hosanna means save now. Save us now. And if ever there was a time that we can pray that prayer, come on, it is right here and right now. Come on, somebody shout, save us now, Lord. Save us now from ourselves. Save us now from our pride. Save us now. Save us now. Save now. Save now. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. This is the Sunday. Palm Sunday. That God demonstrated his love for us in such a tangible way. He set everything in motion so that even though we were sinners, we could be saved. Is there anybody saved in the house today? Is there anybody saved? In the same people, listen, joy comes with your salvation. Listen, when you're saved, you're not saved and sad. God didn't save you to be sad. I mean, when you're saved, there is the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on, there is saved, folks. Let me see a sign of your salvation this morning. God saved me. God came, kept me. God protected me. God blessed me. You're saved, shout out, I'm saved. Oh, y'all whispering. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you're saved, then you're not ashamed of this gospel. Somebody shout out, I'm saved. And your salvation is not of yourself. It's the grace of God. It's the goodness of God. The goodness of God. That God prepared us. He prepared us. For whatever it is that we would that would we would have to go against and struggle with, whatever it is that would come against us, He prepared us. God created us. He knew that this Palm Sunday, He knew that it was time for His purpose to be realized, His plan to take place. Remember last Sunday we talked about in the beginning God. God was before the beginning and he created a plan for our salvation and that plan included sacrificing his son. Jesus, when he was born, he knew he was preparing to sacrifice his life because he loved us so much. And that's hard for me to be quiet when, 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 when God knew ever since his birth all the way up through his childhood through his teenage years, through his adult years, he knew that he would, he loved us so much that he was going to sacrifice his life for us. And here it is, the Palm Sunday, the Sunday preparing for his purpose. Preparing for his purpose. For us, his people. For the joy that was set before him. Come on, can we just give God five more seconds of praise for a God that would love us? For God so loved the world. Come on, can we give God a little bit of praise? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem 
as he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. Loose it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. The Lord has need of it. The Lord has need of you. Somebody shout, the Lord has need of me. The Lord has need of me. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the coat, its owners asked them, why are you untying, untying the coat? They replied, the Lord needs it. Oh my God. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the coat, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices. This is Palm Sunday. Listen, we just got to do what the Word says. You see, this is just not me trying to pump you up. God is just not trying to pump you up. This was the Jesus is worthy of our praise. He inhabits the praises of his people. The Word of God says,
saved by your grace through faith and we receive it it is in Jesus that we pray amen amen tell you today is that you've got to learn how to be okay in the fact that everybody's just not going to like you. Listen, listen, you've got to learn how to be okay in the fact that everybody's not going to like you. Even though the Bible says rejoice with, the, with them that rejoice, everybody's not going to rejoice when you get a man. Everybody's not going to rejoice when you get that promotion. Everybody's not going to rejoice when you get a brand new car. Listen, listen, listen. And and, 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 and see, the, 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 the tricky part about that is that we, people think that they can steal our joy. Steal our joy. And steal our peace when they don't praise God with us. No, no, no. You have to understand that this joy that we have, God gave it to us. Amen. We have, listen, listen. God gave it. This peace we have, God gave it to us. So people cannot, cannot take your peace. People cannot take your joy. Listen, that's not going to stop them from trying. I know I've got a few witnesses in here that, 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 that people will try to steal your joy. People will even try to steal your praise. Listen, listen, but people do not determine your destiny. God does. God is in control. I say that and I say it often uh, because, because I feel like it needs to be said because uh, uh, people have so much power in our lives. We, we allow people to, to, to judge us and compare uh, us to other people. And then we begin to live our lives according to that comparison. Somebody shout, the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. I need you to know that, listen, listen, listen. While it's okay to have your friends and family that do like you and that do love you and that support you. I thank God for people that support me. I praise God for people that believe in me. I do. I praise God. Can we praise God for the, the people in your life, the real friends, the real family, the real folks that believe in you, that support you, that encourage you? Encourage you. It makes a difference. Um, but, but Jesus, God, you understand that, that, that he is God and, and God is in control of every situation, every circumstance. And, and, and even though he created us, God created us, he knew us and he knew that everybody that praised him was not for him. Everybody that praised him wasn't for him. And, and, and you're going to see in this passage of scripture where, where we know about where we are right now today, we're... We're close to crucifixion. We're close to the cross. Jesus knows he's coming close to the cross. He's coming close to fulfilling his purpose. And, and, and you're going to see in the scripture where, where, where Jesus actually wept. And no, it's not the John 11 wept when Lazarus died. Because that wept, the translation of that Greek word, uh, uh, was, was like a, uh, your kind of cry, a soft cry to yourself. But, but, but when you see when, when, when Jesus wept in this passage on Palm Sunday, when he wept this time, the, the Bible declares that this week was like a loud, bitter cry. That, that he was boo-hooing, crying, crying, and, 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 and crying because God's people, the same people that were for him, even though this was a time of celebration, a time where, of, where, where God was coming in declaring that I am God. I am the Messiah. Listen, listen, you know how he did every time Jesus did a miracle. It started with his very first miracle. Uh, what, what was his first miracle? What was Jesus' first miracle? When he turned water into wine and his mother came up to him. Listen to my Bible scholars out there. His mother came up to him and said, Jesus, 
We have a problem. He listen, the rot, the wine has run out. And, and Jesus says, woman, my time has not yet come. My time has not yet come. And every time he did a miracle, Jesus had to keep it on the low. Because why? His time had not yet come. That didn't stop him from doing the miracle. But since his time hadn't come, every time he did a miracle, he had to keep it on the low and keep it private. You know, every time he, he healed somebody, remember, he healed the, the man with the withered hand. He said, now go and tell no one. Every, every time he did a miracle, he's why? Because his time had not yet come, and, and, and he didn't want to he didn't want to move before it was time to move. It is in God that we live, move, and have our being. We have to trust God. Watch this. Trust God. Not only trust him, but trust his timing. And in and, and, and trusting his timing, even though God blesses you, God has got a greater blessing in your life. And listen, we can't, we've got to, we got to, when God says, stand still, be still, we've got to learn how to be still. Amen. When God says, be quiet, we've got to learn how to do what? Be quiet. Be quiet. But here comes Jesus, and, and his time has finally come. It's Palm Sunday. And he's coming in, and, and he's, the people are, 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 are they're excited because they had just watched Jesus in his last miracle raise his friend Lazarus from the dead. Remember we talked about that. And that raised their faith level, that if he did it before, he'll do it again. If he did it before, he'll do it again. And listen, 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 listen. He had just raised Lazarus. And now here he is. He's coming in. He's coming in. Before he comes in, watch this. He gives instructions proving again that he is God. He's proving that he is the sovereign God. How? He's telling his disciples to go into the village that they're not in. He's showing his omniscient that he knows that there is a donkey. That there's a donkey in a village that he's not even in. How does he know that? Because he's God. He's a sovereign God. And watch this. Not only is he sovereign God, all-knowing, listen, all-powerful. Watch this. His providence is taking place. Providence is God's provision. God's providing for us. Listen, God making provision for us going before us in his sovereignty. Stay with me. God in his sovereignty going before us. Making provision for us to accomplish his purpose in our life. Listen, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all kind of quiet. Y'all not saying amen. Okay, I'm going to give you a good example. Abraham, who we talked about last week. God told Abraham he would have a son. Abraham tried to go out and get his own son, Ishmael. God said, no, that's not the promised son. And when God finally blessed him with his promised son, who was Isaac, God says, now that I've blessed you with what you prayed for, listen, 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 listen. Now that I've blessed you with what you prayed for, I need for you to bring him to me, to sacrifice your son to me, to sacrifice your son. Watch this. Here's providence. Abraham not knowing this, but God had already gone before Abraham, made provision for his problem. What is the problem? God wants him to sacrifice his son. That's the problem. But God had gone before him because with God, God is, listen, he's before the beginning and he's after the ending. So he had gone before him, made provision. But see, we don't know that because we're stuck in time. So that's why we have to walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. But God had already made a way. Some of you are going through some stuff and you can't see. You can't see where God has made a way. All you see is the problem. All you see is what you have to sacrifice. And you can't see yourself making this great sacrifice. This costs too much, God. I can't do it, God. But God is in control. And in his providence, he's gone before you in this problem. And he's already made his provision for you. You just can't see it, but you got to take a step of faith. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God has ordered you to step. I tell somebody to step by faith right now. Somebody shout step. You can't see, but you can step. You can't see, but you can step. But it takes trust to step. Abraham didn't see, but I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. 
this because God is a providential God. That brand would, had been there the whole time. But sometimes we get so blinded by the, the uh, extremity of our experience that, 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 that we can't see the goodness of God. We can't see the grace of God. We can't see the providence of God. Knowing that God will make a way. Knowing that God made a way for you before. Has God ever made a way for you before? Listen, has God ever kept you out of an accident before? Listen, when you didn't have no money, did God already pay your bill before? Listen, 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 listen. When you were lonely and by yourself, did God send you the right person at the right time? Listen, if he didn't, he will. He made a way. And, and, and listen, if he did it before, he'll do it again. And that's what he's counting on us. To, to, to raise our level of faith to a point that we'll, even though we can't see, we still step. Yes. We can't see, but we can step. Amen. Like right now, me looking at you, y'all look so good. Listen, and y'all look like y'all hadn't been through nothing. But I already know because the Holy Spirit already told me, listen, and I know some of the hell that I've been through. Listen, just because you don't look like what you've been through, listen, don't mean that you ain't been through nothing. The reason you look so good is because God is good. God is a good God, and he made a way for you. Listen, listen, listen. Somebody need to praise God that I don't look like what I've been through. Listen, listen, listen. God is a good God. He's a, he's a good guy. So let's look. And then here with God, just so good. Um, 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 we, we dress up so nice and we're so we're, we're so together that, that 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 and dignified that we're too dignified to even uh to, to raise our hand and say hallelujah and lift our hands to Jesus. Because God has been, I want to say, almost too good to us. <laughs> that we forget where the blessing came from. When you pray to God. Believe that you receive when you pray. Isn't that what it says in Mark 11, chapter? I'm, 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 I'm at that level of faith. I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm already at that level. When I pray, I believe it. I know it's already done. I just can't see it in the natural realm, in the physical realm. But I know God has already gone before me and made provision for this problem. So I know it's already done. When you pray, believe that you receive. When you pray, watch this. And it will be yours in the natural, Amen. in the physical. But it takes faith to receive it in the natural. Amen. What God has already done in the spiritual. It takes faith. Step by faith. Providence. So his providence was the ram. Are y'all getting what providence? I really want y'all to understand what I'm talking about. The ram was there. He provided for Abraham. Amen. The same way with Jesus. Listen, he's doing the same thing. In his providence. Watch this. So here, in his providence, God knew that there was a donkey there. He knew that there was a donkey. Proving that the same God that had a ram there for Abraham had a donkey there for Jesus. Somebody shout providence. 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 That's, that's, that's God determining the details of your life. The power of God determining the details of your life that we can't figure out and see. Uh, in, in his divine providence, God has provided a way. You can't see a way. How am I going to get this promotion? How am I going to get everything? Because God has shown you some things. God, God has shown you prophetically. You have seen yourself in the future. You've seen yourself happy. You've seen yourself with, with a house, owning your own home. You've seen yourself with that woman standing by you, no matter what you go through. Listen, you've seen that. Uh, uh, you've seen it and you can't understand how it's gonna happen. Listen, you have, to, you have to take steps of faith, knowing that God has already gone before you in his divine providence and made a way. A donkey! There's a donkey in the town, and I need for you to go get it. The donkey's gonna be, watch this, tied up. But I need for you to untie it. Untie it and bring it to me. And if anybody tries to cause you any problems, mm, anybody tries to cause you any problems, tell them that the Lord <laughs> has need of it. God saw a donkey. God, in his divine providence, as his sovereign providential realm, decided to use a regular donkey. 
a regular old donkey that was tied up to, to use it to serve his greatest purpose. Amen. A donkey. And if God can use a donkey, don't you know God can use Lee? Hallelujah. Don't you know God can use Lee? Somebody asked me the other day, how long have you been pastor? How long have you been preaching? I said, not that long. And they kind of look, because they look, and they know I'm, I'm not 20 anymore. And they, and they said, you haven't been preaching that long. Most people your age have been preaching a long time. I said, no, I haven't been preaching that long. I said, now God called me to preach a long time ago, over 20 years ago. I knew it. I heard him loud and clear. But I said, uh-uh, no way. I'm not doing it. God must be making a mistake. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. He must be making a mistake. Why would he call me ordinary me? I'm a nobody. I struggle. You talking about struggle. I struggle speaking. And preachers preach. So he must have made a mistake. So I knew he called me. But I just said no. What? You told God no? Yeah, I said no. And watch this. He didn't make me do it either. He didn't make me go do what he told me to do. But God is in control. How many know God is in control? Amen. He's in complete control. Amen. And when God says something's going to happen, <laughs> it's going to happen. God already knew about my no. He says, okay. He knew I was going to say no. And, and here, 20 years later, when I heard God again say the same thing, and he told me more emphatically this time, made me respect him a little bit more, more showed me what happened in the past, showed me what's going to happen in the future. I'm like, okay, God. So listen, I, listen. no matter what God has shown you, and listen, it's going to come to pass. God is God. And if when God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It don't matter what you say. It don't matter what you do. God is in complete control of your life. You may be saying no now, but it's going to happen. Because God is sovereign. He's a sovereign God. There's this donkey tied up. Go get it. God used a donkey. That blessed me. I'm going to get past it because I think that's the very first verse. That God would use a donkey. If God can use a donkey, God can use me. That ought to give somebody confidence this morning. If God can use a donkey, then God can use me. Not only was it a donkey, it was a tied up donkey. Some of us won't even come to church. Some of us feel like God can't use us because we're tied up in our sin. We're tied up in our mess. We're tied up in our affliction. We're tied up in our mind. We're tied up in our disappointment. We're tied up in our depression. And we feel like God can use us. But God told me to tell you, the Lord has need of you now. The Lord has need of you. The Lord has need of you. He knows you're tied up. Watch this. And God didn't loose the donkey. God is God. He could have loosed the donkey. No. God sent somebody. He says, release. Somebody shout release. release. God has, God, he sent somebody else to set you free from whatever's been tied you up. God has sent, he sent some other people. You have to learn how to recognize divine connections. You've got to learn how to recognize God's divine providence in other people. God is sending a person to set you free. A person. To set you free from whatever it is that's held you tied up, to, to restrict you when you can't walk by faith and walk to where God has called you to do. Walk. God has sent somebody to set you free. It's time for you to be set free and for God to use you. What else happened in the next verse? So, so, so after they went and got the donkey, the Bible says the donkey was there just as God said it was. I love that. I love, I love that God is in control of my life. I love that God is sovereign. I love that. Those who were sent ahead went and found it. <laughs> I keep saying this all the time. And I know that this, oh man, I'm going to tell you, this makes some people mad every time I say this, but a man is amazing. Can we give, can we give God praise for, I'll tell you, people, that's right. You have to learn how to praise God for yourself. Everybody will clap for you all the time. I'm just telling you. But God is for you and God is with you. I had just said it and then she popped it up. That's the Holy Spirit working, working.
through her. Watch this. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as God had told them. Whatever God told you, it's going to be just as God had told you. Just like he showed you in your mind. Just like he showed you in your heart. It's going to happen just as God has told you. Does anybody believe the word of God today? I know it's been a long time. I know it hasn't happened yet. But it's going to happen just as God has told you. We walk by faith, by what God said, not by what we see. And not by what other people said about us. Those were his sin. They went ahead and found it. And so they found a donkey. And then they put Jesus on the donkey. And then they, they began to pull off their coats. Like I just, coat, I would pull it off, but I ain't feeling that this morning. But, but listen, they, they, they began to pull their coat off and throw their coats down. And, and, and the Bible talks about it in John. We're in Luke right here. But, but, but John says that they, they got these, these, these palm trees. Palms signifying peace and, and the palm leaves, and they lay the palms down. And here comes Jesus riding in on the donkey. Why is that significant? For one reason, according to the Romans, they were looking at him like, Who in the do he think he is? Because listen, he had been he had been giving them clues and signs of who he was, but 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 they, they, they couldn't get it, they couldn't get it. But Jesus said, listen, listen, my time has come. Remember when he told his mother, my hour has not yet come. He told all other people, listen, listen, go and don't tell it. Jesus said, his time has come. The time has come for everybody to know who Jesus is. The time has come for everybody to know that God is in control. The time has come that for everybody to know that God has all power in heaven and on earth. The time has come. Now is the time. Now faith. Listen, Hosanna means save now. Listen, listen, listen. So, 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 so his disciples got excited. Remember, they, they had just raised Lazarus from the dead. So, so, so they said, oh, he is the Messiah. And then they knew too because he's fulfilling scripture. Uh, he's fulfilling scripture when they said that the Messiah would come riding in on a donkey. When they saw this, they began screaming because they knew the word of God. You got to know what God said to believe what God's going to do. Listen, I'm going to say that one more time. You got to know what God said to believe what God's going to do. Listen, they knew the scripture said that the Messiah was the coming in. And they had been waiting and waiting and waiting for the Messiah. And, and listen, waiting. And then they see the scripture being fulfilled before their very eyes. They begin pulling off their coats, throwing down limbs, and saying, Save us now, Lord. Save us now. Praise be to God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. He was making his announcements that I am the king. I am who I says I am. He had just said when he raised Lazarus, I am the resurrection. He was building their faith because this was Palm Sunday. And he knew that Friday was coming. He knew that Friday was coming. I may get in trouble for saying this, but can I qualify by saying it like this? Sweetheart, can you go and find that scripture in, uh, uh, in the same in um, Luke and go on down uh, and it shows where, where Jesus wept. He wept because of what was going to happen to Jerusalem. Um, one reason I believe, here's, this is me, this is all Lee. This is all Lee because, you know, I take myself and throw myself and try to transport and put myself right there with them. And I see Jesus crying bitterly, crying bitterly and crying, knowing that it's only days away, seven days away from his crucifixion, where he knows that these same people that are saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed in the name of the Lord, they're saying, crucify him, crucify him, spitting on him, hitting him, beating him. Taking a, 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 a crown of thorns and pressing it down on his head. He, he knows all this is going to happen. And you can't tell me that this, this, this week right here, he says he wept over Jerusalem. He wept over, yes, he wept over the city because he knew that because these same people, these same Israel people who refused to receive him as king, crucify him, there was a judgment for that. And Jerusalem was destroyed. Yes, he was crying for that. I want to qualify that I know scripturally, biblically, why he, they're saying he's crying. Because he's sad over Jerusalem. Because of the punishment that they're going to have to endure. Don't be deceived. Whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. They're going to reap because of what they did to God's son. 
and Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. So yes, he, he's crying. But you can't tell me. This is Lee. Because I know if I'm right there, and I know this is about to happen to me, and the people that I've that, that, that been with me all this time, the disciples that I've trained, I've taught, I, 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 I've, I've impart, imparted my power into them, that they betrayed me. People that I've handpicked. Do you know he handpicked Judas? Handpicked Judas. The most qualified out of the twelve. And he betrayed him. That's what I was telling y'all at the beginning. Listen, listen, don't expect everybody to like everybody before you. Listen, it's not, it's, they, everybody wasn't meant to like you. Listen, I'm going to say this. Make him in trouble too. God sent some people to be against you. Yes, he did. Woo! Yes, he did. Move for they start throwing stuff at me. God sent you. You want everybody to like you. Maybe that person is on assignment to dislike you. Some people are sent to dislike you. So that his purpose, because God is building, he, he, he is building something in you. He's building your resilience. Resilience is your ability to bounce back after adversity. God is doing something in you. So I want to say that I say that Jesus was crying because, because he was so hurt. And, and, and not just, no, that's a tear. No, he was crying out loud. He was crying, yes, for Jerusalem, but crying because his people that, 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 that he had so much for betrayed him. And then he was going to go through what he's going to go through for them. Not, not regretting going through it, but not looking forward to it. Palm Sunday. Preparing for his people. And that, 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 that her, as he approached Jerusalem, he, he wept. He wept. And if, if you research that word, you'll see that. See that. You'll see that it was a bitter weeping. But, but I want you to know that, that these same people, these same people believed him. And they, they shouted, Hosanna. And then they shouted, crucify him. But it served his purpose. Judas served his purpose so, so that God's purpose could be fulfilled. And I want us to get, stop trying to make everybody like you. Listen, listen, stop trying to make everybody accept you. You have to be okay with that. That's my point. Listen, you don't have to give everybody a piece of your mind. God has, listen, listen, Jesus was built. He, listen, listen, he was, he, was, he was built for this. Uh, he, he was built for this. He was built for this. He was, he was built for this. Uh, listen, so, so he was built for rejection. I was talking to this. Guy and, and, and Lee can attest to this too because military, he got on that camouflage thing. <laughs> Listen, it don't matter what you feel like, it don't, it don't matter what, how early it is in the morning, when, when it's time to get up and, and fulfill the assignment, uh, it can say something like boots to the ground. When boots, boots hit the ground, it's time for boots to hit the ground. It don't matter what time it is, it don't matter where you when it's time for boots to hit the ground, it's time for boots to hit the ground. Listen, listen, it's time, that means it's battle time. Listen, listen, and you were built for battle. You were built for battle. And, and, and the battle that I'm referring to, the battle that I'm referring to is, is when other people, when you're feeling the hurt from other people, when you're feeling the rejection, when you're feeling the betrayal, listen, and you try to fight on your, fight on your own turn. Listen, listen, that's not the way you fight. Listen, you can have power. You can have power. You can have the power to fight back, the power to win. But the greatest fight is to keep your focus. Amen. Listen, here's the real fight. When it's time for boots to hit the ground, when it's time for the boots to hit the ground, and it's time to prepare for battle, here's your real fight. It's to keep your focus and not be distracted so that you can fight the real fight. Listen, Jesus wasn't sent to fight all these Pharisees and Sadducees. He stayed focused on his purpose. God has given you a purpose. And the enemy sends all these different people to talk about you, to degrade you, and, and try to down you, to, 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 to disappoint you, discourage you, to get you focused, off your focus. Because he knows that God has a plan for your life. But you have to know it. He knows, he knows that. But we have to know that we have to stay focused okay. and don't fight fights that don't matter. Yes. <clears throat> don't fight unnecessary battles that don't matter. Yes. The real fight is to keep your focus. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, I, I hear you talking about me, but it don't matter. I know y'all talking about me. I know y'all think I can't. I know y'all think I'm not good enough. I know y'all think I'm not qualified, but, but, but I'm not going to be. Listen, the devil knows it. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you this. Listen, the devil knows that he cannot destroy us. The devil knew he could not kill Jesus. The devil knew he could not destroy you. Don't you know if the devil thought that he could kill you, you would have been dead a long time ago. He would have taken you out in that, in that last car accident you had. Listen, he would have taken you out in whatever this is in that last illness you had. The devil knows he cannot destroy you. The devil knows that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. He knows that he can form a weapon against you. He knows he can't, he knows he can't destroy you. So he puts forth his best effort to distract you. So, 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 so you won't realize your destiny and, and, and accomplish your purpose. He can't stop you, but he can try to block you. But it's up to you to fight the real fight. And don't fight battles that you weren't intended to fight. Don't fight with your family. When God didn't call you to fight with your family. Fight for your family. The real fight is to keep it focused. Amen. So, 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 watch this. Jesus was focused, and and and, and I love uh, what he what he was demonstrating. His power, his meekness. Listen, here's the scripture that he that he described himself in. Uh, you talk about is it Matthew 11 chapter where Jesus says, "Take my yoke." Remember we talked about take his yoke. Take my yoke for it's easy. When, when God makes easy. Listen, listen, listen. He says, "For I am." Meek, lowly in heart. I am meek. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is not weakness. Y'all can check this out if you want to. Meekness is not weakness. Uh, weakness, meekness is. Meekness is this. I want y'all to get this. Meekness is power. Somebody shout power. Power. Power under control power under control so when jesus says i am meek please believe he was not saying i'm weak and even though he looked weak he was demonstrating his power under control we are to be like jesus we know that he's given us his power through the Holy Spirit. God is expecting us to have power under control. So when he built us for battle, in the building process, you're going to come across some resistance. You're going to come across some rejection. That is a signal. That is the sign of God's favor on your life. Listen, when you experience rejection, when you listen, 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 God is, he's, he's building He's building you. He's building you. Listen, you were built for battle. Somebody shout, I was built for battle. Built for battle. You don't have to, you don't have to lose control every time something comes against you. Every time somebody comes against you. Listen, listen, you say, I was built for this. I was built for this. I was built for this. I was built for battle. under control. Listen, listen. I got a couple of points that I want y'all to get. Practical points that I really want you to get for this to zone in on you. Uh, your assignment is so great. God has, uh, God knows the plans for your life. Y'all know Jeremiah 29, 11. He's got a great plan for your life. And, and, and listen, we've got to know that we're built for battle. That means that even though we have power to go off on them, even though we have power to retaliate listen our power is to show restraint that's a sign of God's favor on your life a sign of God's favor on your life is showing restraint listen he's building restraint restraint is to keep your power under control he's building restraint when you have 
things coming against you, when you have stress, anxiety coming against you, when you have problems on your job, when you have problems in your family, you just can't go with the flow and, and, and just go with your feelings. No, you have to exercise restraint. Somebody shout restraint. restraint. Listen, this is a sign of God's favor on your life when things come against you. Oftentimes we think that when things come against us, that means God is not with us. No, no, no. It's a sign that God is building. He's, he, he's building on you. And, 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 it's, and it's for you to exercise restraint. Even though you have power, it's power under control. Jesus, I think this again, here again, um, if you go on right past this, after he, he rides in on the donkey and they say, Hosanna in the highest, uh, uh, the, the Romans took this as an insult because they knew what happened in battle. Anytime a king would conquer a people and conquer a territory, they would mark their territory, of course, with a flag, saying that this is our, it's the same thing like going on in Russia, Russia and Ukraine right now. What they would do is, and uh, the king would, would come in, watch this, not on a horse, but on a donkey. He would come in, on the king would ride in on the area that he's conquered, ride in on the donkey saying, listen, I am, I am king. That's why the Romans were so offended by this. They were so offended when he came in riding on a donkey. And then, and then God's people, they knew that the scripture was being fulfilled. And, and they were saying, oh, God is getting ready to take over now. Listen, listen, he's done all these miracles. Listen, he's, he's opened blinded eyes. Listen, he's opened deaf ears. He's healed leprosy. He's even raised Lazarus from the dead. He says, it's time. The king is here. The king is here. We're about to take. And they're thinking of a military coup. <laughs> but God wasn't doing things according to their expectations. When God doesn't deliver you according to the way you want to be delivered, don't think that God is not working in your life. God is in control. God's going to do it his way. He's going to do it through you exercising restraint, keeping your power under control. And if you go on down in there, right after this, I was trying to figure out why would they have this? Because as soon as Jesus comes through there, it says that he wept over Jerusalem. And if you go on down in the scripture after that, it says that he went into the temple and they were buying and selling the temple. And Jesus went to the temple. Turn the tables over. Turn the tables. He says, listen, don't get it twisted. Listen, I got the power. I'm not they go in and crack it with whoosh. Turn the tables over. No. Why? Because he had righteous indignation. Righteous anger, righteous indignation. He was angry because what they were doing in the temple saying that, listen, the only way that you can come in here is that you had to be able to bring this excellent sacrifice. And Jesus said, hold up, wait a minute. You're keeping people away from away from me. Listen, I don't want you to keep anybody away from me. Everybody can come to me. You don't have to be rich to come to me. Listen, you don't have to live in a certain neighborhood to come to me. He says, everybody can know who Jesus is. God has made a way for everybody to know who he is. And it makes him angry when people try to block people and stop people from coming to Jesus. And so he went in there and, and watched him just releasing a little of his, of his authority by going and turning over tables. Yeah. And he says, this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. And, 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 and even though he knew his time was coming, I, I think Jesus was just showing, listen, listen, I'm meek, but I ain't weak. <laughs> I'm meek, but I ain't weak. And he went in there turning tables over. And, and, and listen, he knew that his hour was coming. So, so, so listen, listen, listen. Being built for battle is showing restraint. Knowing that, 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 that everybody that comes against you, listen. That doesn't mean that God is against you. That's right. Listen, but God has assigned some people. Don't let that absorb so much of your focus. It used to bother me so bad, first lady. It used to bother me so bad, you know, because I'll be up here and I'll teach and I'll just read the word of God. I'll get so excited with the word of God. I can just read the scripture. You know, my God shall supply all you need according to riches of glory. I get it, I get excited. I'll jump up just over that. And people just sit there and look at me like, oh. and that thing used to bother me. But you know what? I, I, God has taught me. He was building in me. He, he, he was building me for battle. You know what I'm saying? See, see, you can't focus so much on acceptance from other people because you miss your assignment. You will miss it. People are going to be people to Jesus. And Jesus knew that. He said, yeah, y'all saying who's down and down. He said, Jesus, he basically like, I ain't thinking about y'all. <laughs> the same ones. 
And we have to come to that point to stay so focused. Stay so focused on what God has called us to do, that God has determined our destiny, that God has made provision, providence. He's made provision for every problem that we're encountering. Some of us are going through some problems right now. We don't see a way through. Know that God's providence has already provided a way. You may not see a way, but God has made a way. I promise you he's made a way. God is a providential God. God, listen, he's already been there. God has been there and back. Listen, he's the first and the last, the beginning and the ending, the alpha and the omega. You've got to know your God. You've got to know that about God. Know that. Know that. And even though this is Palm Sunday and Good Friday is coming, listen, that's not how the story ends. <laughs> that's not how the story ends. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Palm Sunday is so significant because we're celebrating our salvation. Yes. That even though we will die a physical death, that we'll live forever. And this old body, one word about this old body has been hurting and broke down because we'll be getting a new glorified body. Amen. A new glorified body. That will still be us. We'll still be able to recognize and take joy and celebrate that, that, that God set all this in motion. That whosoever believes in me shall never die. That's what he says. I am the resurrection and the life. Listen, we've got to believe that, people of God. You've got to know that. Not believe that in your head. If you think about it too much in your head, it'll mess you up. Because every time your heart wants to have faith, your, your mind will try to make sense. But you have to know that heaven is a place that God has prepared for us. Yes. How do you know? Because God said it in his word. He said in his word that I have gone to prepare a place for you. Yes. And that gives me hope. It gives me encouragement. And not to focus on, on the fear Amen. of leaving this place. Fear of dying. Because as you get older, I don't know if you know this because I'm getting a little older now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting closer to 60 than anything else. And as you get older, you begin to think about death more. Listen, if you look at some older preachers, and watch watch out for this. When you see some older preachers, older than I am, you want to be a lot of their sermons are going to be about what? Yeah. Hmm? You know why? Because they get closer to it. And, and the closer you get to it, the more you think about it. And, 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 and you, but you don't have to let that absorb you. Absorb you that you're going to die a physical death. Don't let that be the focus. That's not your focus. Your focus is to go out there and get as many people to join this family, to join Jesus, so God can help build them up for battle and add to this kingdom. God has, God has sent us on assignment, and he doesn't want the enemy to have us so focused on what's going to happen. When things start looking so, he doesn't want us to focus on that. He wants to focus on what he has planned for us, on what he has prepared for us. Focus on life, not death. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God, somebody shout, but God. But God, but God has come to give us life, everlasting life, everlasting life. So, 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 so to listen and listen, nowadays it doesn't matter about getting old anyway. It doesn't matter, but I want to encourage your heart. Listen, listen, don't allow fear to absorb your thinking. God wants you to, to have perspective and know that God is with you, that is for you, that has got a plan for your life, a purpose for your life. And that's what our focus is to be, to accomplish whatever it is that God has planned for us, to enjoy life. And to do what God has called us to do. He's equipped us. He's empowered us. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe you believe you give God some praise this morning? Come on, give God praise this morning. Father, we thank you this morning that you are the resurrection and that you are the life. God, I thank you that you've given us the power to show restraint. To keep our power under control. God, and to build our resistance when people 
try to come against us, God, that we stop trying to win people over, God. People that are never going to be for us, God. We thank you for giving us the ability to know that you are with us and you are for us, God. God, thank you for building in us, God. Building in us as you were built for better, building in us resilience. The ability to bounce back after everything the enemy throws at us, God. God, we thank you, God. We thank you for empowering us, equipping us, God. For your work, your great work that you've called us to. God, we know that no weapon that is formed against us, no matter how many that are formed against us, we know that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And God, we thank you that no matter how many people come against us, God, that you are for us. No matter how many people have rejected us, God, you chose us. You called us, God. And we thank you this morning. God, we thank you for teaching us how to keep our power under control and allow you to fight our battle. To show us that our, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And that we're not fighting other people. That what we're fighting against is a spiritual battle, is a spiritual warfare. And that our victory is in you. That we are fighting from victory. Not fighting for victory, but we've already won. And we say thank you for the victory, God. Thank you for victory, God. Thank you for victory in our families. Thank you for victory in our jobs. Thank you for victory in our bodies, in our health. Thank you for victory, God. We thank you for delivering us for everything that had us bound up and tied us. We thank you for sending us people to set us free, God. Sending the right people to push us into our purpose, God. And not focus on the people that are trying to stop us. Not focus on the people that are against us. And not trying to change their mind about us, God. Because you are with us and you are enough. God, we thank you that you are enough, God. thing that we're going through, this attack that we're under will not take us under. That people will not push us down. Because when people push us down, God, we know you lift us up. God, we were built for this. That we will not be discouraged. We will not be depressed. Because we were built for this. We were built for battle. We thank you for building us with resilience, with resistance. We thank you for restoring our mind, renewing our mind, restoring our bodies, God, restoring our health. We thank you, God, for changing our perspective, God, giving us the power of perspective, God, to see that no matter how bad it looks, God, that you've already made a way, God, you've already made provision for every problem that we're going to, that you've been there and back, God, and you've already made a way, you've already sent a donkey, God. God, you've already sent a ram in the bush, God. You've already made a way, God. God, we trust you. We know and we believe that you are God who's, and you are who you say you are, and that you will do what you said you will do. And we say thank you today. We celebrate you. For this, our great salvation, God. God, we don't take our, self, our salvation for granted. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for saving us. Come on, say that with me. God, thank you for saving us. Thank you for saving us. From every attack of the enemy. God, we thank you, God, that you spoke in your word to touch not your anointing. And we thank you, God, for the enemy not being able to destroy us. For us to be able to recognize and realize when he's only trying to distract us. With unhappy people, with people trying to pull us back and pull us down, discourage us. The enemy's only trying to distract us because he can't destroy us. He can't stop our blessing. God, he cannot stop us. He cannot destroy us. We thank you. We take comfort in that. That this battle is the Lord's. God, we're going to be still. And know that you are God. And we thank you today. 
We give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God a great big praise today. Come on, you're good for value. Give God a praise today. Come on, come on, give God a bow praise. Come on, come on, come on. Praise God that you're fighting for
praise God is giving to And that God has blessed you to be able to give. Listen, I, I really want y'all to uh, hear what the word of the Lord is saying today and get this. Um, because you know your giving will increase as, you, as God is gonna, uh, as God is promoting you. I mean, you know, promotion can come from people. I don't care what your supervisor is doing. I don't care uh, what your family it doesn't matter. Promotion doesn't come from people. Promotion comes from the Lord. And, and I'm gonna tell you how this works. How this works is that everybody will like you as long as you're still in the same old position. But as soon as you get promotion, uh oh, get ready. Get ready when you listen, when you get that promotion, when you get that degree. Get ready. Listen, listen. But the but the key here is to not be distracted by that. God has called you to more. The promotion is coming. And the main thing is that promotion is coming. Somebody should give God praise for promotion. I don't know who's getting promoted, but promotion is coming. Your purpose is going to be accomplished. I'm just trying to let you know that the higher you go, the more haters you, you're going to see. Anybody ever read the book of Esther? Y'all know about Mordecai and Haman. In the book of Esther, in, 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 uh, there was Haman. He did, did not like Mordecai, but for nothing, just couldn't stand him. And he, had, he used his influence with the king. He tried to use his influence with the king to bring down Mordecai. And then, watch this. So, so when the king told him that God, God used him, and the king, he, he told him to tell me, Mordecai, tell me what, because he, tell, tell me, Haman, what you would do for a, a person who deserved to be honored, deserved to be celebrated. And Haman told him, I'll do all these, God, I'll do this great, great, I'll do all these great things, I'll shower him with blessings and do all these great things. And, and the king says, great. He says, now go and do that for Mordecai. The guy you've been hating on. That's where God's gonna elevate you. The people that who got your destruction plan, listen, God's gonna, listen, God's gonna promote you. When they're fighting against you. <laughs> Mordecai blessing. Can we call it that? God's gonna send you a Mordecai blessing. For the people that's been plotting against you, who say that you aren't qualified for what you do. Listen, God's gonna promote you. Promotion comes from where? The Lord. Listen, we have to just step back. Because when we try to fight our own battles and fight against these folks, you know what? God's gonna step back. But when we step back and let God fight our battles, that's when God's gonna step in. When we step back, God will step in. And step up. But we got to keep our power under control. And in our giving, listen, listen, as everyone that's in the house, listen, if you want to give, listen, you can come and, and give and drop your give offering in now. For those of you that have been giving with us online, we thank God for you. We ask you, we encourage you to continue to give. Continue to send your tithes and offerings to Living Word Fellowship Church Post Office Box 231055, Montgomery, Alabama, 36116. Listen, if you don't want to send it in, you can just simply go to our website, hit that give tab, and give that way. However you want to give, we thank God for you. Can we bless God for all the givers? We thank God for you. We thank God for you. Listen, we speak blessings over your life. God loves a what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. So we pray that you give cheerfully. Give cheerfully. Listen, don't give me
Lord bless.